Welcome back. In the last part, we set up our database, we created the roles and the users there, and our first well connections, or we assigned the first roles. Now it's time to do, to do the remaining work, to create the actual middleware which protects our route. I start in the user model here, where I will define two new methods. And this is one of the rare times, so to say, where we actually define more than just, well, the relationships in the user model. But here I really need these extra methods. The first method I will need is a public function which uh, says, or which is called has any role. And with this method, I want to have a way to check if a user, later in the middleware, the authenticated user, has a certain role. And I need this method well, to find out if he has this role and to be able to determine if the user should be granted access to a certain resource or not. I will pass an argument called roles, which will contain the roles I want to check for. So this will work in a way that in, when we're in the middleware and we know that a certain route is only accessible by, let's say, roles admin and offer, we would pass admin and offer to this function and check if the user has one of the two roles. And only if he has one of those roles, he's allowed to access this resource. In this function here, I will first check if roles is an actual array because we are also allowing to pass a single role instead of an array of roles, which is like a little convenience here. You could, of course, also pass a single role in an array, but we're providing this convenience here. So if we're in an array of roles, then I want to loop through this array, uh, through all the roles in this array with a normal for each loop, and I will check if this, the current user, this, uh, of course, refers to the currently locked in user or on whatever user object we're calling this has any role later. If this user has a role, this function doesn't exist yet, I'm going to create it in a minute. If he has this role, not roles, role. If he has this role, I will return true. Because then I want to tell well, return with the method, then the user actually has this role, which is exactly the check I'm running here. And if I'm checking if he has any of these roles, I don't need to continue in this loop because I know, yeah, he has any of the roles I, he needs to access this resource. So we may just finish. It doesn't matter if he has all the roles. This is the, the one part of this function. The other is, well, just if we're not getting an array of roles, but a single role, well then, of course, the only thing we do is basically we re repeat this. But here we have roles because even though it's called roles, it's only one role as we're not having an array. So then we would also return true in all other cases though, though we would return false because the user does not have the role or any of the roles we're checking. This leads to the second function, the has role function which we're calling here and here. This has role function will well, check if the user has a specific role. And I do this by running or checking if this, the user, roles, which is the relation to all the roles, again, using parentheses to stay in the query builder. So to say, to say, okay, I'm going to add some arguments to this database call I'm making here. I will, and here where, well, the name of the role is role. And then the first element. Now what this does is it accesses the roles of this user and then sees if in these roles the user has assigned to it, the role we're checking for appears. If this is not the case, then the user does not have this role. So here I can return true. Otherwise, we're returning false. 
So this is how we prepare our user model to be able to check if the user has a certain role. And with this, we're well prepared to write our actual middleware. Before I do this, I want to do one other thing. In my admin blade view, view here, I want to populate this admin view page so that we can actually see the check marks here because we all got all the functionality we need to show the check marks. To do this, I'm going to create an input element here, which is of type checkbox. And if it is checked or not depends on, well, the case if this user, the current role we're in, has this role or not. So here I'm entering the blade template expression and I check if the current user, we're looping through all users here to output them in the table. If the current user has a role, and in this case, well, it's just the user role. I'm doing this hard coded here. Of course, you could come up with a dynamic way, but this is already split up over several videos and I didn't want to make this too long. And it's not a core thing to this uh, ACL um, system I'm showing. So this is how we check if user has a role. This is just a function we implemented a few minutes ago. And if he has this role, well, then I'm going to set the check attribute. Otherwise, I'll not. Now, we'll just copy this for all three roles. So here I have the offer and here I have the admin. And I also want to set a name attribute here. This is needed later when we're actually able to change the roles. This will be called role user, this input here. This input will be called role offer. And the last input will, of course, be called role admin. Now, with these changes in place, if I reload this page, you can see the actual role assignments we have due to our seeding. And this looks, looks all right to me. Offer has the offer role, admin the admin role, and our normal user the user role. So this works. Now back to the middleware. We're going to create a new middleware and here again we can use Artition to help us set up this file. By just calling PHP Artition make colon middleware and then the name of the middleware which I will call, just call check role. Now in my middleware folder under app HTTP I have this check role PHP file which is conveniently already set up in a way that we don't have to do that much. Inside this handle function, I first want to check if, well, we actually have a user in our request. So if this is not null. So this means if we're trying to access this not logged in, then we will always be, well, sent back on all the routes where we are checking for roles because well, no matter which role you theoretically have, if you're not logged in, you're certainly in the wrong place. So then I will return a response and this will just be a text response where I say insufficient permissions with error code 400, 401 unauthorized. I have to do this because if I did not do this, I'll try to access this user of the request in the next steps. And this would throw an error if the user is not set. Therefore, I will need this check before I actually do this. Next thing is I need to retrieve some actions and I will come back to this in a second. I do this by accessing my route, the route we're currently trying to access here when this middleware kicks in. And here are the get action method. Now, this is a little bit difficult to understand, I imagine, and it will be clearer in a few seconds. Basically, with get action, we can access these key value pairs we're setting up in our routes array here. All these are actions of this route, and we can define our own actions, and we will do so later. So, 
these actions we're manually defining then will be the actual roles which are allowed to access a route. And in this check role middleware, I'm basically retrieving these roles here by getting the actions. However, actions is, well, this array. This is the actions variable, or this is what we store in this action variable. Later, we'll have like roles and then an array which says offer admin, for example. And then we want to retrieve this roles key in our actions. To do this, back in my check role, I will add a new variable, which basically first will check if action stars have this roles key, because not all our routes need it, we're also having routes which are not protected, which may be accessed by everyone where we don't use this role middleware or where we set up this role middleware but don't define any roles. So first we check if we actually do have any roles set up. And if, is, if this is the case, well then all we do is we store them. The roles we set up for this route are stored in this roles variable. Otherwise, well, the variable variable will be null. Oh. So next step is to access the user in the request. And this again is the reason why we have to check if the user is null before we do this here. And use the has any role method we created earlier in this video to check if he has any of the roles we retrieved here. or if roles is not set. If roles is not set, well then also we want to allow the user to proceed and we do this by calling return next request. The statement that was at the end of this default handle method created for us by the artition command, this basically says everything's fine, you may go on with the next middleware or whatever. So we're done, we're done checking, everything's fine, you may continue. And uh, you may continue if you either have one of the roles or if no roles are set up. Otherwise, you're, well, trying to access a resource you're not allowed to and we will well, let's just copy this. We will return the exact same response. This is how you create the middleware. Now, the last step in this video is to register this middleware. And we do this in the kernel PHP file at the very bottom of this file in the route middleware array here. At the end, I will create a new middleware and I will just call it roles. The name is up to you. And this will point to app HTTP middleware and then check role and here it's important to add this class um, keyword or access here property so that we refer the actual class. With this the middleware is created, it is registered and in the next step, in the next video, we will actually protect some routes with it and do all the final touches we've still got to do. See you there, bye!